Unlocking Secrets of Body Language with Janine Driver, author of You Say More Than You Think. Join us for this enlightening conversation with Janine Driver, renowned body language expert and author of the best-selling book, You Say More Than You Think. Dive into the fascinating world of nonverbal communication as Janine shares her insights on how to read and interpret body language cues, detect deception, and enhance your emotional intelligence. In this interview, Janine unpacks the science behind body language, revealing how our unconscious movements can say more than words. She provides practical tips on how to use these insightful insights in our everyday interactions and decision-making processes, whether it's personal relationships, business negotiations, or even self-awareness. Take advantage of this opportunity and learn from one of the leading experts in the field. Tune in, enhance your communication skills, and make better decisions today. Welcome to the Wellness Driven Life Show, where you're about to go on a wellness driven ride. excited to introduce our guest to you today. Janine Driver, a New York Times best-selling author and award-winning keynote speaker, has a distinguished background as a federal law enforcement officer with the Department of Justice. Now she applies her people reading skills to educate, it, educate corporations like Salesforce, P&G, and Coca-Cola. She is a renowned TEDx speaker with over 6 million viewers on YouTube. She is also ranked number one in the inspiration category among the world's top 30 body language professionals, significantly impacting how we comprehend nonverbal communication. Please help me welcome Miss Janine. Hi, can you see me? Because my computer went crazy. Some scammy thing popped up. As long as you can see me, can you see me? We can see you. All right. Well, I can't see you guys. I don't know what just popped up. So I'm like, Mc, McAfee thing. This is one thing. Listen, I'm good at reading people, but I'm not good at electronics. <laughs> I don't well, even know where that came from. It is so awesome to have you here. I'm, I'm here just glad here. that you're here because you have such an awesome background, awesome history, and so many things that we get to share with the audience that they may not know about you. So I'm happy to dive in. Do you want to share with the audience a little bit more about you? Oh my gosh, I don't really know where to begin on that question. Uh, I think, I'll, I'll tell you this. I did this uh, weird, like, I call it weird. This is me. I'm very judgmental. I work on this all the time. So you want judgmental people in your life because if you don't have judgmental people in your life, you'll never get a compliment because I, I'm very complimentary. Uh, judgment, we are all born with this ability to evaluate people. And some people have more of it than someone else. And so what I was going to say, I went to this weird breathing class. For me, it was weird. I don't know if you've seen this online, but but people like breathing and they're screaming, like literally like, ah, like screaming. And I'm like, I gotta see what this is all about. And I did that a week ago and it really helped me explore like, who am I? You know, like mm. that question of who am I was very interesting to me because while some people were busy screaming and I think that that's what they needed to do in that process of it. it was like breathing and different types of music it was it was fascinating it was life changing and it was like you know i don't think the everyday person does something like this but there's an exercise where they make you scream where you have to say i love me i love me and you have to scream at the top of your lungs i love me and i at first i did it because everyone else is there there were about 380 people in the room laying on yoga mats with eye masks over our eyes but now we're sitting up saying i love me and I, after I screamed it once, I, I realized I don't need to scream that. So why do I say this about who I am? 
um, I need to be softer. So in that exercise, I needed to say, I love me. Instead love of scream it out. Instead of screaming out. And I think, so for me, I'm from Boston originally, and I've had some childhood trauma, like many of us have had some type of childhood trauma along the way. And I believe all those little traumas, I call them blue streaks. A blue streak is a bolt of lightning, right? So a, a bolt of lightning comes and what happens? You get out of the pool, you stop playing golf or playing outside. So a blue streak is something that happens in our life that changes the direction of our life quickly. So I've had some childhood mm. trauma that including a man who tried to kidnap me when I was 16. And that all this trauma ended up sending me over to law enforcement. I worked for federal law enforcement for some time for a little less than two decades and learned some really cool skills. And um, beyond that, I'm the oldest of three sisters. And in this breathing workshop that I did, uh, it was very interesting because a, a piece of me got mad. I'm like, why did these types of traumas not happen to my two younger sisters? And they might not have had the same trauma as me, but they had their own traumas. You know, yeah. I, my middle sister felt like she was never really seen. One time my middle sister um, pulled down some Brit Britannica books, like these, these books that you used to get. It's like the, when Google was like okay. in a giant manual, right? And she yep. pulled them down in the closet and they came tumbling down just to try to get my mother's attention. And my mother didn't even come in. My mother goes, what are you doing in there? So like, I think we all have these different child, childhood traumas. And I think some of us um, are at the mercy of them. And some of us, uh, maybe you're like me or you know someone like me, take those experiences and, and have them serve us. So for me, mm -hmm. uh, single mom, divorced, I was with him for 20 years. We get along great by the grace of God. I have emotional intelligence. He's working on emotional intelligence. I'm always working on it. And, uh, <laughs> That's my that's my thing. I, I ended up learning at, at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, where I worked, ATF, doing firearms trafficking and analytical interviewing and explosives work, um, learned how to read people. And that's helped me so much in my life. And then I've taken that and left ATF, retired at the age of 38 and wrote a couple of books. They did well. And by the grace of God. And now I'm a motivational and keynote speaker. And I do some workshops online, mostly in person. And I'm an eternal student. So I'm also an expert on decision making. So if anyone has questions about weaknesses or strengths in decision making, I'm, I'm your girl to ask as well. Oh, well, you're in the perfect audience right here, especially for me. I would love to have some tips and tricks on decision making because I think a lot of women sometimes suffer from being able to make a very quick decision, right? And what is it that a lot of people, a lot of couples struggle with too? They go out and they're in the car and they say, honey, where would you like to go and eat? And it, it becomes like this thing where it's a frustration because nobody really knows how to answer or they feel like they're making the wrong decision. Anyway, that is an interesting topic. So you have yeah, definitely a colorful, incredible background where you have really had it propel you. Like you talked about, you've had these experiences, these traumas, so to speak, and everybody has traumas and experiences them in different ways because it's our own perspective. So right. what you did with that was you just ran with it. You had it propel you into making okay. use of it in a certain way, entering the field of law enforcement. I can relate with that very much with you. When I took some of my things that happened throughout my life and my childhood, and I and I pushed myself into something because I didn't want those experiences to define me. So I always mm -hmm. wanted to show up in the world to be something greater than. And so to prove that to myself and everybody else around me. Yeah, I call them blue streaks, right? This like yeah. I remember at ATF, I worked at the World Trade Center in New York City, and I had a boss. Her name was Colleen, and she was not a very nice boss. She led by intimidation and fear, and I'm a hard worker, and so th that kind of leadership doesn't inspire me to want to um, have your back when other people are bad-mouthing you. It doesn't inspire me to want to go above and beyond. Um, I prefer that uh, positivity. A, a friend of mine, Brian Galke, reads faces, like literally, like I read faces too, but emotions. There's seven mm -hmm. emotions we have, happiness, sadness, fear, surprise, anger, contempt, and disgust. And it doesn't matter where you live in the world, they're universal. Yeah. But my 
Brian reads like the shape of your face, you know, the shape of your eyebrows. And the reason I tell you this, if you were to take a business card or my cell phone here and put it from one corner of my eye to the other corner of my eye, my eyes tilt up just a little bit here. So if you were selling to someone like me or trying to influence me in any way, you would want to tell me the benefits of something. So mm. I'm all about positive. Some other people have downward eyes from the inside to the out. So their eyes then come down like this. Those are people that are going to want to know the downside of things. Like, hey, if you don't do this, um, like how to prevent bad hires. For every one hire that you hire that's a bad hire, it's costing your company an average of $60,000. And here's why. Yep. Then they're, you know, the average we keep, we know within two weeks, they're not the, a good fit for our culture, but you keep them for six months. So now you've got other top employees leaving. When you finally do fire the person, then they're going to go online. They're going to say bad things. That kind of motivation, when you tell me I can't lose weight or you tell me I can't become a healthier version of me, mm. that does not motivate me. I know some people, like my mother, my mother would be like, oh, yeah. And like two weeks later, my mother would be down like 22 pounds, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I'm not one of those people. If you can understand how to read people, you know how to influence them differently. Like you can see, look at my glasses, okay? I'm going to give you a tip right here, everybody, you at home. Look, look at my eyebrows while I'm sitting here. Now, granted, my eyebrows are raised, but I want you to look at my eyebrows versus my glasses. So what my friend Brian, who reads faces, we do a, we do a course together. He talks about how to read. I talk about reading the room once you're in the room, and he talks about how to get it prepared before going in. Mm -hmm. My eyebrows are curved eyebrows. And yes, I, I call it them in a smidge, but it doesn't matter. It's the curve of my eyebrow. Even if you don't have eyebrows, if you choose to curve it. Curved eyebrows send the message that I'm the kind of person that wants to know what's in it for me and my team and my family. Curved eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Straight eyebrows, like I'm wearing with these glasses, people want to get straight to the point. They want the facts and figures straight. Mm -hmm. um, some eyebrows come up, like Brian's, my friend, and it comes up and then it tilts down. It's almost crooked. Those are people that, what's my angle? What's my angle? So Brian says that most people will wear glasses that match the curvature of their eyebrows. So yeah. this, would be, this would be more in line with the curvature of my eyebrows. Yeah. However, this is not as strong as this. So, and this matches my outfit because it's blue. So, so you will see, even though I have these straight glasses, look at my eyebrows going way ahead. If you had straight eyebrows, you wouldn't even see them. It would be like this. The eyebrows would go straight along with the glasses. So the power of reading and influencing people. I, I just got off the phone just now, uh, like 20 minutes ago with Michelle Dresbold. She's an author of a book called Sex Lies. No, yeah, Sex Lies in Handwriting. And she's a handwriting expert. And we're doing a podcast together. So any tips, April, that you have for me, uh, Michelle and myself are open to any strategies and tips that you have. We're well, right on names. Yeah, you, you know a lot more than I do in that realm, because it was many, many years ago for me now that I went into that forensic aspect of the writing and learning the features. And it's amazing how in depth that goes. And I was just going to put on my glasses here. I'm like, oh, what, what does this say about me okay. <laughs> and, and, and how I look and how we perceive? So what I'm curious about too, is because you have chosen the glasses that are straight, does that give you those like two different personality aspects that you uh, pertain? No. Because no. no. Okay. No, because it, 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 that, it has to do with the structure of your face begins to change over life. And so oh. I'll, show you, yeah, I'll show you this right here. Not everyone has a line I'm going to show you on my forehead. Yes. And I'm single. I have a boyfriend now, but I'm divorced. And um, my, I, could, I would only date people with lower eyebrows. So, so look at my eyebrows here. Okay. So if, if my eyes are open and my, my body's relaxed, from my eyebrow to my eye is one finger. An eyebrow is like a speed bump. So information comes in choo -choo, and comes over is what, what Brian Galecki will tell us. And this means I get information very quickly. It comes in and I can understand it. High eyebrow people, when their eyebrows are really high, the higher the eyebrow, the more of a difficult conversation you're going to have because they're going to not quite understand it. They're going to be confused. They're going to ask multiple questions. Mm. And so for me, every time I would date someone, I would send the face to Brian and I'd say, you <laughs> called the face for me. You called because I do micro expressions, which are emotions. And so now I'm starting to learn a couple of things. I'll show you one right here. Let me see. I'll point it out with my glasses. Do you see? I have three lines here. One, two, uh -huh. middle one. See this middle yep. one? Yeah. That middle line, not everyone has it. That middle line is called a freight train line right here. 
Oh. This, this, one, this vertical line. This is a freight train line, which is get on board or get out of my way. My last name's driver. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a good fit because I'm pretty driven. So it doesn't mean I have to have my own way, but it means get on board or get out of my way. I'm going to make this happen. Don't tell me I can't do it because if it's something I want, I'm going to make it happen. That's so funny. I think, yeah. I think I have, well, no, maybe it's just. No, you, 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 you don't have that one. You don't have that no, one. So you have both. I just have two. Well, those two are called force focus lines. So it means that you are able to focus when you are doing something, you can put everything else out of your head and get force focused. Do you have yeah, this? Some, like I have this? Oh, yeah. I do see that. Do you have that one? Let me see. Mm. No, How? but you're younger than me. How old are you? I will be 40. Oh yeah, I'm 53. So, but <laughs> so you might have this yet. So this right here is called a burnout line. The right? burn. Oh geez. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm very driven. Like I will, I don't get a lot of sleep. I have ADD. So a lot of ADDers don't get a lot of sleep. My brain yeah. is always like ping, ping, pinging, pinging and get, getting information. So it says I have this burnout line, but even when that happens, I still can push through because I've got that determination, that freight train line right here. Here we go. So That's very fascinating. I just, I absolutely love that. And, and I love that you have the buddies, the friends, the connections of, Hey, I'm going to send you this, other, picture, so this guy. And what do you think? Does it, yeah. does it make sense? Well, I'm curious too, is there books on this? Like if people want to yeah. learn more, dive deeper, where do we find out more? That's a good question. I don't have that. that so that is like face reading. It's called physiognomy. And there's a book. Let me, let me write to Brian and see if he can tell me the name. Um, he's working on his own book right now. And, but you can look up physiognomy and it's really cool. Or you can look me up and I'll, I can even connect you with Brian. Um, he, he does because here's the funny part, because I've had him analyze so many, li literally like 40 faces of these men when I was dating online, um, he created a training online and it's called looking for love and all the wrong faces.com. <laughs> no, no, no hyphens looking for love. And you know, that song looking for love and all the wrong places. So for him, it's looking for love and all the wrong faces.com. And then you teach yourself. Hold on. What's the book? you recommend hold on let me see what he has to say you recommend on your topic he was teaching earlier today as a, a keynote speaker at an event over in texas near neck of the woods all right yeah so i'm an eternal student i went to college in columbia college to find out more about movement you know we think of body language like stuff like this or like this yeah. or like this or like this or like this, or like this. Um, there's another world of body language that is connected, and we all move in these 12 movements. And these 12 movements connect to how we make decisions in life. It's called movement pattern analysis. We move in a pattern which can be analyzed. So I'll give you a couple of them if you want. You want a couple of body language? Things? Yes, I would love that. Well, I don't think I've talked about this on a podcast before or a show. Um, I think I'm, that we're pretty lucky here today with you. Oh, oh, well, I'm, and we're live over on YouTube. So hi, YouTube, whoever's watching from home or work or <laughs> if you watch after it was live, uh, I hopefully I'll get to come back and answer any of your questions. And we'll figure we'll figure out how you can get in touch with me afterwards. But um, uh, some of the moves are this one. All right, let's talk about Donald Trump. I, I stay away from politics, but I'll talk about Trump. Trump does this move a lot. Doom, right? Whether you like him or you don't like him, you see him doing this, well, right? People know about him. I think the majority of people know what he looks like in his movement. So that's yeah. a good reference. So he does this with his hands, right? He does this like almost like he's playing with an accordion. Da, na, 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 right? Like he's got this accordion. Yeah. Going. Well, this move here is in, in the world of movement pattern analysis where we have a behavioral fingerprint. This right here is called enclosing and spreading. Enclosing. Mm. And spreading. These people think outside the box. So if you think about mm. Donald Trump, last time he was running for president, he talked about owning like a meat company at some point. And on either side of him on the stage were like Mac Daddy American flags and then tables <laughs> full of raw meat, right? Like these are the people that are explorers. So they'll think outside the box. I mean, he also, you know, it, 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 to a positive for Trump, I try to balance it out because I hate politics. A positive is he also went to the front lines and went and literally talked to the agents that are board, watching our border borders. Mm -hmm. Then he literally went out there. So that's kind There's of a an boldness. Yeah, a so boldness. This, 
so this is called thinking outside the box. It's called yeah. exploring owls. So owls, we think of owls of turning their heads all the way around, but owls eyes can turn in one direction in the other and take a panoramic picture, just like your, your iPhone does this panoramic picture you can take. Yeah. Owls do that. So these are people that can think outside the box for the good and for the bad. So for the good, they'll come up with creative solutions for the bad. They'll come up with some kooky things if they hang out here a lot. So this is, so it's spreading. So I'm, I'm just spreading my body. I can lean like this and, and, and spread my legs. So spreading mm -hmm. and closing. Mm -hmm. Um, another one is determining. So I'm very determined. So when I talk, you'll see me bounce a lot. And so this bouncing is an increase in pressure and it's connected with people who stand their ground, persist against get difficult odds. When the going gets tough, I get tougher. But my weakness is stubbornness. Now, my ex-husband, his name's Leaf. We get along pretty well. Leaf is low in determining. He doesn't have this when he talks, this ump. Because I'm like, let me tell you a story. Everyone thinks I'm angry over that. Let me tell you a story, this bouncing. Uh, he's low in this area. So this means he doesn't finish projects. He'll paint the room. I used to say, who can paint a room? Who can paint a room? Leave 20% undone, the 80% man. When I profiled him, the reason he'll do like, 30 percent mm. of the dishes and then go back in the day watching the walking dead and the dishes like a third done is this low in determining and i would get mad until i found out oh he just he physically doesn't have the behavioral fingerprint that i have and so now i don't get mad like if i get when i was married to him at the end like i wouldn't get mad if he if he didn't finish it because he ran out of the steam because here's the deal People who don't finish things in your life, if they are in fact low in determining, I'll tell you what their superpower is if you want. You want to know what their superpower is? April? Yeah, I want to know. So people who don't finish things who are low in this determining, this part of the behavioral finger. By the way, we all do this. It just matters how often we do it. See, I just did it talking. Um, people who are low in determining, they won't finish projects. However, they're flexible. Mm -hmm. And so often we've never thanked the people in our lives. We remind them. We tell our kids, we tell our coworkers, we tell our employees, hey, get this done. You never finish. You start, but you don't finish. But we never say to those people, you know, I want to thank you for your flexibility. Yeah. When we're, able, when we're moving restaurants that we're going to for a work luncheon, you're always like, okay. Or when we're doing something last minute, you're like, okay. For me, we spent every holiday in Boston. I'm from Boston. He's from California. So how often did we go to California in the 20 years I was married? Zero for Christmas. So maybe too, maybe too flexible, right? Yes. Well, yes. that's what happens. Someone who's super low in determining can't stand their ground and persist against difficult right. problems. Yeah. He couldn't stand his ground. I was married to him for 20 years. Listen, the marriage was pretty much over two years in. People will say to me all the time, my friends, how did you stay married for so long? If the marriage ended two years in. And I think it's it was that. Or yeah, well, we compliment. So if you have someone in your life personally or professionally that that you are different than, like you butt heads with, um, you compliment one another. You actually together make a better team. Mm. So my husband's name's Leaf. Leaf and I made a great team. We complimented one another. Yeah. He would like take my edge off a little bit. Yeah. And I could give him a little push, right? When he when he right. needed a push. He said he's in politics. I'm in the DC area. Everyone's in politics over here. So he sometimes would be a little like, I'm like, you got this. That was a great idea. Yeah. Like I could give him the the motivation, the oomph that he right. needed. Yeah. That's that's really good perspective. And I I think that so many of us need that extra boost, that other side that we don't we lack in right? To, to have that complimentary, we can show up in the world. We're stronger because we have each other to do that for. Right. Because here's the deal. This is connected to your movement. It, it's created throughout our childhood. And so by the time you're in your twenties, this is like, it's done. It's done. It, it, it's right. like your car manual is not going to change. It's over, right? Whatever the car manual says, whether you have that truck for five years, or you have that truck for 30 years, the car manual is the car manual. It is what it is. The only way we can grow with regard to decision making, because how you're, you how you make decisions at 20 is going to be how you make them at 80. The difference is because some of you, I'll, I'll be the antagonist here, will say, no, Janine, I make way better decisions now. Yes, because you've created strategies around your weaknesses. So for mm -hmm. me, I'm impulsive, which I am. You might have um, a strategy around not you don't have any credit cards because you're too impulsive or you have a credit card that has a five thousand dollar limit, but you put it in a Ziploc bag. 
And then you put that inside of a bowl full of water and you put it in the freezer. So if you really want <laughs> to take this frozen bowl out of the freezer, take that Ziploc bag and that you can't impulsively go buy something at home goods, right? Mm. So you've created strategies. For me, one of my biggest weaknesses as I scratch my head, because high level pacifiers happen when you're under stress, even though I teach this stuff, it still happens to my body. Because you know, no one wants to talk about their weaknesses. I miss things that aren't right in front of my face all the time, mm. including I had a woman embezzle over $60,000 from me and she was running my business and my mother was dying of breast cancer. I was Aww. going through a vitro um, and I found out she, two days before Christmas, she was embezzling. So I had let her um, control the whole company. I had terrible internal control. She did the contracts, yeah. the negotiation. She got the money. She would then pay me my piece of the money. Um, and so I was bamboozled. I, I was so focused on my mother dying. It was her last couple of months. Yeah. And, and she had, I should have seen it. I teach how to, I teach pre-assault indicators. I teach fraud investigators. I have in a fraud investigator class that's coming up in a couple of weeks in Nashville. And so I do this for a living and I missed it. Why? Because I was so focused someplace else. Yeah. I, it's called low and exploring. I pay attention to what's right in front of me, but if it's mm -hmm. not in front of me, I will miss it, including someone embezzling from me, which is, was devastating. I miscarried because when I found out I was so devastated. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, the betrayal. Yeah. You know, I, I, yes, betrayal. I'm so pleased that you say that. Thank you for being vulnerable in saying that, because I think that so many of us, when we are supposed to be the expert in things and, and if we, we downfall and, and then we're not shining and, and being held up to this expectation of what we should be because we teach it because we exude it. Right. And it just, it's like this, it, it, it's it's a huge hit. It makes sense to me that you miscarried. And I'm so sorry that that happened. But yeah. we are very hard on ourselves because of that. Like, I almost didn't do the wellness driven life show because I have gained a good amount of weight. And so we picture ourselves as something, you know, or identify ourselves as something. So I think it's incredible that you can just say, even I you know, had this experience because I innately show up like this. And if I'm not concentrating on, you know, I, sometimes I don't get the big picture because I'm right here. Everything's yeah. like just narrowed in, especially yeah. when you have something really emotional happening in your life, such as your mother. It's a, it's a weakness. So for me, I have to create strategies around that all the time. You know, I mean, something as simple, April, if you or the, or the viewer at home here on YouTube, if, if you ask, I don't drink coffee. So if you ask me to go get you some type of coffee at the grocery store, because I don't drink coffee, I'm going to go look and I'm not going to see the coffee. I won't see it because I don't buy it normally. Right. So I'm right. Just, and so my strategy is I take my hands and I literally go like this, like I scan the shelves and I'm like, I know it's here. I know it's here. Or if I'm looking for something in the fridge, I'll say to someone else in the house, I have no doubt that there's butter in this fridge or that there's you know, I don't do almond milk. I do cashew milk. I'm sure that I put cashew milk in here, but I have looked for five minutes. I cannot find the box of cashew milk. And I'll say my to one of my kids, Charlie, will you, you Charlie's very detail oriented. I call him the governor because the governor of Virginia, where I live, because mm -hmm. he asks lots of questions. He's very detailed, right? If, he, if you say three o'clock, he expects you to be there at 255, walking in the door at three. Right? <laughs> yeah. And he's only 10, by the way. He's only 10. This kid is, I have three great kids. This kid, man, he, you know what he did? He's so detailed. He, I've been traveling a lot for work doing keynotes and he, when I put him and, and Jack, my little into bed, this was last week, like five days ago, Charlie said, Hey mom, when you close the door, look behind the door. I put a surprise there on the wall and I close the door and there's a spider there. And I go, Oh, you're trying to scare me with this spider. It's around Halloween time. And he's <laughs> on the wall and there was taped on the wall was a note and the note said he's 10. Um, you're working hard these days, mom, um, open up to see a present. And I open it up and he taped a $100 bill inside this letter. Oh, what's this for? And he goes, I want you to go do something fun for you. Like get a massage or do something fun. Oh, he's taking care of his mom. Where does this 10 year old kid get a hundred bucks? I go, where'd you get a hundred bucks? 
He said he saved it from his birthday, which was in August, and it was in his piggy oh bank. Gosh. But I was like flying trip to trip to trip to trip. But Charlie, my strategy will be if I can't find something, I say, Charlie, you're a wizard on details. Will you look for this thing for me? And lo and behold, boom, Charlie will find it. I'm never going to be able to see things that aren't right in front of me. So what is your strategy? Whatever your weakness is. This is what I say, April. My roots are growing in here, right? So, But I've been coloring my hair blonde since I was 17, right? Do you think my roots would get with the program and start coming in blonde? <laughs> Like, get with the program. We can change ourselves and others for up to six weeks. Our job as leaders, as mentors, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as moms, as um, just human beings, our job is not to try to even change ourselves or, in my opinion, but or change others. It's here's who I am. You know, I just watched, I rewatched the uh, Fred Rogers show last night, the movie. It came out a couple of years ago. And uh, Tom Hanks did such a wonderful job uh, imitating Fred Rogers. And and Fred Rogers talks about this song, I Love You Exactly the Way You Are. And there's this guy who's interviewing him for, to write this piece for this magazine, for Esquire. And the guy goes, uh, I heard you like people like me. And they're out at breakfast. And Fred Rogers goes, what do you mean? He goes, people like me, people who are broken. And Fred Rogers is like, you're not broken. And I say this to all of us here because I think that that's a good reminder. Like, it's not mm -hmm. about fixing and changing who we are. It's it's here's who I am. Because my biggest weakness, my ex-husband's biggest weakness is corresponding to his greatest gift, which is flexibility. He's the most likable, flexible guy. He'll roll with the punches. Everybody likes him. He's funny. He's quick on his feet. That's his superpower. So if I wanted mm -hmm. to get rid of the, the, the lack of drive, then I would also get rid of this incredibly loving, flexible man in the process, you know, where do we thank those people for their superpower? So every weakness in decision-making has a corresponding superpower. Can we love others and love ourselves exactly as we are and stop saying I'm broken? Cancel, cancel, right? My mother would say, cancel, cancel. That's stinking thinking. Watch your stinking thinking, Janine should say. So mm -hmm. instead, let's reframe it. Okay, this behavior is not working for me. What can I do? You know, hey, you're the well wellness-driven life show. You know, I love the Atomic Habits. This is a great book yeah. for me. So during COVID, I gained 100 pounds. I went through a divorce. My business, I make money flying from Japan. I have big clients in Japan, in the in Europe, in the UK, and in Canada and the United States. Those are my top markets where I fly and I talk to business and leaders and change management. When companies merge, they'll bring me in so teams can get along better and work better with their leaders. And yeah. so all that's, on, at COVID, imagine all my international and local travel is is stopped. In the same time, I'm getting a divorce. So I put on 100 pounds. Just this past week, today is day five. For me, no flour, no sugar. So flour and sugar don't serve me well. So Day five too, that's very fresh. Day five. How you doing? <laughs> so I still have some caffeine in, in my iced tea here, my iced tea. But um, I, I know what I do, make, you know, make an easy habit. So I put, I like honey crisp apples. I say it's it's God's candy. So a yeah. honey crisp apple, I put that right down on my kitchen counter. If you went down in my bedroom, if you went down my stairs, I have a split level house in the kitchen. Every night before I go to bed, I put two honey crisp apples, like a backup apple and one bottle of water. So as soon as I walk down the stairs, I'm not tempted by the chocolate chip pancakes the kids are eating. You know, I'm not tempted by any of that stuff. And, and I might not even eat that apple, but I see the apple. I go, oh, it's there if I yeah. start craving sugar. It's, it's your safe. safe. Yeah. It's your safety it's, net. So it's it's just like I'm doing that with the Apple. We can create strategies about mm -hmm. how we make decisions because how we make decisions connects to our body language. And I think pe most people are surprised to learn that our body language is influencing how we make decisions. Think about it. Babies, before they crawl, April, and you at home, what do babies do? They scoot themselves backwards. Why? Because it's more important to stay away from danger before going towards curiosity. Mm. So just like the brain is influencing the body, we know the body is influencing the brain just as much. Yeah. When you wake up in a bad mood, that comes from your gut. So when we wake up in a bad mood, that literally comes from your gut. We have a brain, right? You probably know this. We have a brain, yeah. right? And so our gut is telling our brain whether we're in a good mood or not. So the body is so amazing. As a matter of fact, if you're like my husband and you don't often stand your ground and you can get pushed around a lot, I'll give you a strategy. 
strategy is simply stand your ground. So look, I'm, I'm sitting down, but physically stand up. Put your hand on a wall or on a chair as you talk to the person that wants you to you know, babysit their cats or their Labradors while they go on a vacation again and they live 45 minutes from you. Meanwhile, their neighbors could help, right? And you always get suckered into doing it. So boom, you see it's your mother-in-law. You see it's my, your neighbor. You can pick up the phone and literally stand your ground. I was at an event where I talked about this and uh, I, 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 I have... It's a lot. I have 15 days of content. There's over 5,000 body language moves and over 5,000 words with hidden meaning. Maybe we could talk about a couple of those as well. And this woman came running in. I was on my lunch break. It was I was doing a four-hour event that day. So two hours, break for lunch, two hours. And I'm sitting at lunch and a woman comes running in. She has her phone in her hand and she goes, Janine, you're not going to believe this. And I was like, what, what's going on? She goes, you know that tip you just gave us about stand your ground before we broke for lunch? I'm like, yes. She's well, I'm the event planner for this event here today. I go, yeah, we met briefly earlier today. She didn't work for my client. She worked for my client. She was like an outside vendor, the client had helped, hired. And I go, yeah. She goes, well, I'm planning another event. And they told me just now at lunch that we want white tablecloths. And they called and said they don't have white. They have off-white. And this event is happening in two days. Normally, she said, I would just say, not a problem. We'll, we'll go with the off-white. We'll make it work. But when they said it, I, she stood up. She said she was at a booth, <laughs> at a booth at a restaurant. She stood up. She said she put her hand on the table. And she said, listen, because we requested white and because we've had this contract with you guys for over six months now, I'm wondering if there's another solution because white is what we need to match with mm -hmm. our heart, not off white. I, I can't help but wonder why she was saying because, Janine. You know, because your husband watched my TED talk. So I, I talk yeah, about We watched it together like it a too. year ago or longer. And, okay. and we now incorporate this wording into okay. how we communicate with others. And, and it's so powerful. So if you wouldn't mind just highlighting just a tidbit of it, because I think everybody needs to just go watch the TED talk. So the TED talk is called how five words can get you what you want. It's over on yeah. YouTube or TED.com. It's free. It's a great way for us to work together. And you, people think of me as a body language expert, but I love words just as much. And there's words that have hidden meaning. And the word because is one of the most influential words in the English language. And, and the reason, one of many reasons, is that the word because says a decision is going to have to be made. And so your brain begins to get ready to open up to make a decision. So I'll give you a quick example. I talked to uh, a company out here, Lockheed Martin, out in the D.C. area. And... Uh, one of the, this was like B2B. So this is like high level people. They report to like one person who then reports to the CEO. They have thousands of people working for the people in the room. So we had about 150 people in the room, top level. The head of human resources is there. And um, I talked about the because challenge. And the because challenge is this. You want to use two becauses. So whenever you're going to request something from someone, simply go to your iPhone and if you don't have an iPhone, maybe make this the year you get an iPhone and stop irritating all the people in your life. Um, so, right here, <laughs> yeah. Do we, hold on, hold on. I have to back you up and say that again. <laughs> I say, if you don't game. have an iPhone, maybe this is the year you get yourself an iPhone and stop irritating all the people in your life. Thank you. We, we're sick of communicating with WhatsApp with you, non-iPhone users. Okay? Yeah. So I should be sponsored by Apple for that. <laughs> uh, so right here, um, we have a search button at the top of my text messages, and I'm sure that the non-iPhone users have it as well. You could just put in a question mark. When's the last time someone asked you a question or you asked yourself a question or you asked someone else a question? Put in a question mark, find a time, a place where someone asked you a question, and then rewrite the question. Okay. Um, did Charlie send that picture? Did Charlie send that picture? If I wanted to rewrite that, I would say, because, uh, because Charlie, is, because Charlie's holding a cat in this picture and because I'm allergic to cats, I'm wondering if this picture was taken today, because if it was, I, I, I would like Charlie to have his clothes changed before coming back over to my house, before he leaves your house, leaf, mm. my husband. So you're giving the reasons why. Some people will say, do you have a minute to talk? Well, that's a question. How about this? Because I'm coming to town next week and because we haven't connected in a while, I'm wondering if you're available a day next week to grab lunch or dinner or a cup of coffee. 
So adding two becauses, and I'm wondering, and here's why you add I'm wondering. Wondering is a word that's connected to what's called verbal judo. So I don't know much mm -hmm. about judo, but judo is using your someone else's energy against them, right? Yeah, there was a book written many oh, years ago. Yeah, and yeah. Was law enforcement, we learn about verbal judo. Yes. In law enforcement back in the day, in the 80s and 90s, we would learn about verbal judo. Well, one of the big takeaways in that is the word I'm wondering. Because when we ask someone a direct question, April, want to go to lunch when I come to Houston? Uh, let me think about Our instinct is to say no, but I'm wondering. So add a wondering. So here's what happened with the, the head of yeah. HR. She said, Janine, normally I would say to these business execs, um, sorry, um, thanks for bringing a great candidate for me to consider bringing on board. Unfortunately, we don't have the funds right now since we're almost at the end of the fiscal year. So we're unable to bring that person on board. Boom. That's it. With the because challenge, here's what she said instead. Because you brought us a, a top candidate and because you feel like this person would be a fit for us here at Lockheed Martin and because we're at the end of the fiscal year and we don't have money to bring them on, I'm wondering if they're have a flexi if they flexible on a start date, a potential start date, because when I get the new funds in, in two months, we will be doing a hiring at that point. I asked the 150 people who all work with the head of HR when they're bringing in talent. And I said, which would you prefer, A or B? And what do you mm -hmm. think, said, April, on you at home? B. B. So if you can reframe your question and slap the because in, when, if you start, I know it's bad grammar. I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I give you permission to avoid what, ignore what your high school teacher said, English teacher, start it with because, uh, listen, your high school teacher didn't know that these text messages were going to be coming down the pike and all these emails, at least if you're in my generation. So start with the because it says a decision is going to have to be made and you're making the decision. I'll give you a quick example. My sister called me yesterday. She closes my corporate, we have a small family owned business now after I've been, you know, burnt before. So now my sister, Kerry, she closes all my contracts for my clients around the world. And one client has a small event. There's only 10 people. There are 10 executives, but then they have a huge, bigger event. And so they're considering hiring me instead of for the smaller event. My budget was too high for them, my numbers, to the, for this bigger event. But I work with budgets after 9-11. I mean, after COVID happened, 9-11, after, that's still in my head from earlier. After COVID happened, I'm like, okay, you know, name your price. What's your authentic budget? And I'll, I'll work with your budget. And so my sister, Kerry, was saying, hey, what's your budget? Janine might be able to speak when she's in like in, in town for another corporate event. Like, don't just end it. And because my number was so high, my sister goes, I'm going to use your because thing. Because they went down a, a different lane. They were looking at other speakers. So my sister said, because Janine is willing to work with your budget and because Janine sees this as an opportunity to be a potential speaker for your bigger event and because Janine has 17 events, different yeah. keynotes. I'm wondering if you're open for another call on how we can make this work. And boom, she had a call this morning and now she closed the gig. Yeah. Yeah. Like thousands of dollars we would have lost. And my sister called me up and she was, hey, this because thing really works. I go, dude, I've been talking about this since my TED talk like six years ago. Do you not use it? I yeah. use it all the time. If I put because in my cell phone, you'll see I use it with my kids. I use it with my friends. I use it with my clients. And now I guess my sister's going to start using it because today, just today it worked. So it only took six years for a family to jump on board. Yeah. There's something about family that's always like resisting cool stuff that we find out about, right? You love intermittent fasting. Yeah. You lost 80 pounds doing intermittent fasting. You tell your sister about it. She's like, eh. All of a sudden, some stranger on the internet loses 60 pounds on intermittent fasting. And they're like, I think I'm going to try intermittent fasting. There's something about the resistance of our family. Yeah, yeah there, there is. And I end, I say that because my family does that too. I think it's just so many yeah. of our family members are like that. So, but I'm happy and pleased to hear that your sister has jumped on board and that Not it's more. working because yeah. there's nothing like that feeling of, uh, well, if it's a sibling, I told you so yeah. <laughs> sort yeah. of, sort of feeling. And just that you know, we, we want so badly to help others when we learn these exciting new things. Like you have learned so much about the human body, about language, about all of these things that really helps you propel 
and, and help others in their personal lives, in their business lives. It always fascinated me too, you know, people who come and stem from a law enforcement background and how they are able to jump into a corporate arena, right? And how you can really help people on so many levels and so many aspects because you are already boots on the ground and working with people from all different backgrounds and all stretches of life. And you have to learn how to communicate with people from all over and all different backgrounds and um, difficult and not, you know, you have to be able to navigate those conversations delicately in order to gain the information that you seek. I happen to be lucky because I love human beings. And I really love the story behind the story. And I find it fascinating. Um, I, I, it's one of the reasons I watched this, this movie, what I don't even know what it's called. I think mean, it's called Mr. Rogers neighborhood or something, but I'm like, I want to rewatch that. You know, the love that Fred Rogers had for people was mm -hmm. to me. And uh, a friend of mine, Chris Ulrich used to work for Al Gore when Al Gore was vice president. Fred Rogers had come in and done this thing where you close your eyes and you think of someone who impacted and changed your life. And afterwards, Fred Rogers needed a ride home. And, and my friend Chris ended up giving him a ride home. And they became friends. And he, to this day, Chris, my friend, he's a body language expert in DC, does all the political stuff. And, and he writes a journal, Dear Fred, to remind him to be kind to himself and to other people. And oh, I think I like that. sometimes people are really difficult. And I, I'm very cautious on my language. I'm always working on language. And yeah. so what I say with difficult people is I say they're not always easy. Because I want my brain to hear easy. I don't want my brain to hear difficult. That mm. person difficult. I say yeah. instead, that person's not always easy to work with. So my brain is hearing this embedded command of easy, of easy. And, and you know, anger, I teach, I teach this in all my keynotes pretty much now. Since, since COVID happened, there's a lot of anger in the world. Anger is a secondary emotion to fear, anxiety, and sadness over 85% of the time. So when someone's really difficult and they're angry, I stop and I say, I wonder if, you know, I have a 15% chance of it being anger and an 85% chance of it being fear, anxiety, and sadness. And man, if it's fear, anxiety, and sadness, I can tap into empathy and emotional yeah. intelligence and self-awareness on mm -hmm. how I can respond to that person. Harvard did a really cool study, right? And they, they came up with a cool formula I'm going to give everybody right now. If you're on a call and someone is nasty to you and they're like, hey, I've asked for this six times now. This is ridiculous. You know, this is October 10th and no one's getting back to me or this was supposed to be shipped two weeks ago. Many of us will say, I'm doing everything we can. I'm doing everything I can. I'm doing everything. Stop saying I'm doing everything I can. Harvard Business School teaches you a three-step formula instead that my clients tell me is a game changer. And here's the three-step formula. Grab a pen. You at home in April, ready? Step one is, here's what I know. Step two, here's what I don't know. Step three, Here's what I'm doing to bridge the gap between what I know and what I don't know. So what it would look like instead of me, if April calls and says, Hey, where's, you know, I'm waiting for 200 copies of your book signed because I'm doing this event, Janine. Instead of me saying, April, I'm doing everything I can to get those books to you. Instead, April, here's what I know. I know that your event is October 28th. I also know that the books are coming to me first. I got them through Amazon. I'm autographing. It says that according to Amazon, they're going to be here tomorrow, Friday. They're going to be here before 10 p.m. I also know that I'm here all next week. I'm going to sign all these books and I'm going to overnight them to you. Here's what I don't know. I don't know what time they're actually going to get here. It says before 10 if I'm going to be awake. I also don't know what my weekend looks like because my kids are here with me. But what I'm doing to bridge the gap between what I know and what I don't know is I'm setting aside Wednesday as my emergency day to sign all your books. And they will get to you even if I have to overnight them for the event. So here's what I know. Here's what I don't know. Here's what I'm doing to bridge the gap between what I know and what I don't know. Hey, sir, here's what I know. Yes, you did purchase this item on June 10th. Yes, it was supposed to be delivered to you by September 15th, and it has not been. Here's what I don't know. Once it was purchased and you had called me and said it, it didn't arrive two weeks later, I contacted the deliverable part of our company. And what I don't know is what they're doing with that information. So here's what I'm doing to bridge the gap between those. Yeah. I have a meeting this afternoon because you're the second person to call me on this issue. I have a meeting this afternoon at 4 p.m. I'm meeting with the head of that department. 
And I will contact you first thing tomorrow after 9 a.m. Let me know what time is good for you. So here's what I know. Here's what I don't know. Here's what I'm doing to bridge the gap. Then you know, heard not I'm doing everything I can. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is what's wonderful about that is it gives a full perspective. Um, you're showing that you acknowledge that you understand that you are aware of the circumstances. And because of that, this is what I'm doing in order to do the best that I can. So I think that's an incredible way to go about that. I appreciate that. I, I wanted to bring in a couple of the comments. Uh, Manly Chavez said, I heard anger is sometimes grief masked. What would you have to say for that? Well, that's what we just talked about. So anger is 85% uh, of the time, fear, anxiety, or sadness. So that right. grief, sadness. Uh, and what anger looks like is very similar to those in, in some regards. If we do this, right? We both have lipstick on. We do this. When there's a lip lock, when yeah. there's a lip lock right here, I like to say when we don't like what we see or hear, our lips disappear. Mm. Right? Emotional Ooh. control. So a lip, lip lock equals emotional control. So if someone is sad, yeah, they might be holding it back through anger. You know, even again, I, I, don't, I keep bringing up this movie about Fred Rogers because this main character that's interviewing Fred Rogers is full of anger. He wrote like all these nasty exposés. He's like so angry. He even walks out on Fred Rogers at one point when he's in the in his living room. He's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. And you see that tightening of the lip right here with anger. The lip gets really tight. The brows will come down sometimes in furrow. Sometimes they don't. They look up like that, right? So what we see here, this lip's getting really tight is the guy leaves that's interviewing Fred Rogers, but Fred Rogers knows that it's really sadness. And later he, this guy, of course it's a movie, but he goes and he walks away from his wife and all this drama happens. And he goes back and he says to the wife, I'm not really angry. I'm just really, really sad. Yeah. I'm just really sad. And I want you and like, He's like, my mother died. My father left and ran off with other women. And I watched my mother scream in pain while she died. And I was a kid and I'm just full of such anger, but I'm really just so sad. And he's like crying. And, and although it's a movie, mm. I'm like, wow, that is, that is so accurate to what we see in life. Yeah. Especially during COVID when your kids were being schooled from a computer and you say to your kid, you're like, Michelle, yeah. two teachers told me that you're late on two assignments. What's going on? You're going really nice. And they come at you hot. Mom, I already told dad about this. And I already emailed both the teachers. Why are you now riding me? And you go, hey, watch how you're talking to me, young lady. But if you knew it was sadness, if instead of your kid raising their voice, getting this tightening of the lip, instead of your kid said, mom, I haven't seen my friends in six months. The teacher talks so fast. My ADD is off the charts. I can't even pay attention. I can just stare at a computer screen, mom, for six hours. You tried doing that. Six or seven hours, mom. I'm overwhelmed. Would you say, hey, watch how you talk to me. So when I see anger, first of all, we don't need, ever need to get angry at anger, even if it's real anger, because here I'm going to define anger for you. And this is how Dr. David Matsumoto, one of my mentors and friends, describes anger, legit anger. Anger. It's very easy to overcome, but we get so per we take it so personal. Anger is, I'm on a webinar. That's my son, Charlie. So uh, right here is anger is I have a goal and that goal is being blocked. And all I need to do is figure out what the block is and figure out what your goal is. Now, maybe it's a perception. Maybe there really is not a block. So what's your goal? What's blocking you from reaching your goal? And then use that three-step formula from Harvard Business School. Here's what I know. Here's what I don't know. Here's what I'm doing to bridge the gap between those two. So anger itself is, it's just someone has a goal, that goal is being blocked. Think about the last time you were angry. Mm -hmm. what something didn't go your way. You had a goal, something blocked it, and it pissed you off. Listen, I used to have a trigger temper. And if you at home, if you have a trigger temper, if you're like me, or you know someone like me, I'll give you the best tip ever. It's there's an expression called name it to tame it by Dr. Dan Siegel. And you can find him right here on YouTube as well. Amazing. I've not met Dr. Dan Siegel. I can't wait to meet him. I talk about him all the time. Mm -hmm. When we can name our emotion, you can tame your emotion. So name it to tame it. Why does this work? Well, when we get angry at something, the blood is leaving the neocortex and going down here to this fight and flight and survival and freeze mode. Right. But when we when we categorize something, when we name it, 
the reason we can tame it is once you start to name something and put it in a category, blood goes back to the neocortex. Think about it. The lizard's not waking up prioritizing their day. The lizard's not like, listen, I'm going to put an apple out tonight. So when I wake up tomorrow, I avoid having those chocolate chip pancakes that I make for the kids. Right. So it's not anticipating about the future. It's not setting some goals and prioritizing. When we name it, you can tame it, control it. So here's how I use it for my my anger has almost gone. I would say 99.5 percent gone. My trigger temper. When I get mad at something, because I still it, it, the trigger happens, you know, mm -hmm. I, I name it to tame it. So I, I number it zero to ten. Seven below. Let it go. Eight, nine, ten. Be angry then. So I number it seven below. And so, by the way, since I created the system, I've never had anything above a seven ever, ever. As a matter of fact, I think the highest I've gone is like 6.5. This is great, by the way. I'm so excited to hear this. Yeah, well, I'll give you a quick example. I was doing a webinar for an hour and a half. I, I now teach about anger because of my own anger issues, right? <laughs> and so I was speaking to a woman's group and there were 800 people on a webinar on a woman's group. I'm here in my room where Charlie just snuck his head here as a little pocket door to my bathroom. Charlie and Jack were taking a bath in here. They're at the time were seven and eight. And they get out of the bathroom and there's no, I didn't give them a towel. They didn't get a towel. So they get out and they walk through to their bedroom and it's all covered in water. Yep. Earlier that day, I had had the bathroom painted. My contractor, Alex, lovely guy, but he left his industrial vacuum on the other side of this pocket door. It's a tiny little bathroom. It's not like an ensuite. Like this is a split level house <laughs> built in the seventies, you know? So this big industrial dusty vacuum, as soon as Alex left, I saw it five minutes later, I called him. He goes, Janine, I'm already on the highway. Can I get it tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I'm not touching it. It's like super dusty. So I leave it there. Now I'm talking to the webinar, the woman who's running it, like you and I did, April. We talked for about 20, 30 minutes before this goes live. And her name's Tammy. And so I'm talking to Tammy. I had a couple unsweet iced teas beforehand. I'm like, Tammy, I'm going to run to the restroom really quick before we start this. It was a two-hour webinar or something like that. And I get up, I open the bathroom door, and I, I'm, Tammy's introducing me as I'm running to the bathroom, right? And I open the door, the industrial vacuum's there, so not a big deal. I kind of jump over it a little bit. But what do oh. I do? The water. Boom! <laughs> I fall flat on the ground. Had you been here, you would have heard the boom. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a BBG at the moment, a big bottom girl. <laughs> boom was heard all around Alexander. <laughs> I, think, I think the Washington Monument swayed a little in <laughs> And it went boom when I landed. Now I'm soaking wet and I peed a little. Because I, <laughs> like now, like I have a little bit of pee. I'm soaking wet. I'm like, old Janine, before I knew about name entertainment and before I knew about zero to 10, seven below, let it go, eight, nine, 10, be angry then. I would have lost my cool. I would have got mad at who? I'm going to get mad at my kids. Yeah. Wait a minute. You want to play with Wii's? Wii, Nintendo Switches, like all these game things, but you can't. You can't dry the floor after you get out of the tub. Wait a yeah. minute. You want a TV in your room? You want a cell phone? You But you can't dry the floor? Uh, and then who else would I got mad at? My contract. You know what happened, Alex? Because you left this vacuum here, I slipped and fell while I'm getting ready to do a webinar. And then I had to take a quick shower, blah, 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 blah. And I would have been screaming and losing my cool, right, Boston temper. Not that everyone from Boston has a temper, but a lot of us still over there. And so then when I fell, immediately I go, name it to tame it. And it was a four. And I have a live-in au pair wow. from Italy who, her name's Francesca. She lives, her room is two floors down. It's a split level house, right? Two floors down. She heard the boom. She came running up. By the time she came running up, I'm laying on the floor laughing mm. hysterically because the irony, I'm going to teach this hour and a half, two hour class on anger. And here the universe is testing me. Do yeah. I what I preach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on? I go, it's a four. It's a four. I need to take a shower. I need to take a shower. It's a four. I'm okay. And I hopped in the shower and I came and I'm like, wow, what a great story for me to share that. I'm, you know, they say pray to God for patience and he puts you in traffic. Yeah. So I'm constantly being tested on things that used to trigger me. And I, you know, my au pair, my other au pair from Argentina, she got in a car accident and lied to me. By the way, I wrote a book called You Can't Lie to Me. So she must have been orientation day, right? So she lied about the car accident. I could tell by her words and her body language she's lying. I made her take me to the gym. I wrote a book on lying. Yeah, I literally wrote the book. So I, I have her take me to the gym where it happened. She said she tried to avoid a tree. I knew it was all a lie, and it was. And I was so mad that she lied. Instead, Listen, we all make mistakes. Own your, own your stuff. And just say, what can I do to make it right? I'm so sorry. Not I apologize. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. I'm so sorry. What can I do to make this right? And be authentic in it, right? Yeah. So because she didn't say that, my friend picks me up. We're going out to dinner and to a movie. And she and I'm lit, right? And I'm like, you know what? My au pair did this. And she lied. It's not easy for me not to be mad at her. But I'm mad. I'm mad. My au pair, my friend Aida looks at me and she goes, what's your number? I go, excuse me? She goes, well, what's your number? And I go, oh. Hi, what's your number? You're using my weapons against me, Aida. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> And so my number was like a three or a four. I was like a four. She goes, great. What else would you like to talk about? So <laughs> to tame it, number it. By the way, it's not just for anger. It's for anxiety as well. So people mm. who get anxious sometimes look like they're angry, right? Because anxiety, yeah. a- anger. So anger is a secondary emotion to fear, anxiety, and sadness. So sometimes mm. people are anxious look like, come on, we got to go. April, we got to go right now. We're going to be late. If we don't get in the car right now, we're going to be late. We're going to be late. That's really anxiety that's happening. That's not yeah. anger. It's, it's just, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's showing up. It's like a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? Yeah. So right here. It's, it's anxiety. So again, name it to team it, you know, for you, if you get anxious, you know, notice your tone, your pitch sister, right? Like bring it down, name it. Mm-hmm. How likely if you miss this, you're, is your kid going to get kicked off the basketball team or taekwondo right. if you're five minutes late? Yeah. Right? How likely is that to happen? Or my sister, Kayleen, gets anxious a lot. And I'll say to her all the time, what's your number? And she'll say five. I go, great. What else would you like to talk about? And she goes, you know, that really helped. Her husband will call me up and go, you know, your sister running all these scenarios in her head. She's losing her cool over here. I go, Mike, you married a Ferrari, but you want to put regular unleaded gas in this sister. <laughs> Right? Not regular unleaded gas. You married a, yeah. married a Ferrari. So because people who set goals, measure progress, update plans, the trend spotters that think about the future, they, we need them in our lives. They also, mm-hmm. their corresponding weakness is anxiety and stress mm-hmm. and running so many scenarios, they drive themselves crazy. They mm-hmm. unlikely get sleep unless they do something like meditation or they're medicated. Yeah. So, There's a lot happening and it's all connected to our movement. And hopefully you had some tips and strategies today to, you know, be the best version of you. I'll answer any questions you have, April, or questions. Oh, my gosh. Not just some tips, Janine. You have given so many. And, you know, this episode, I I know that people are going to want to find out more about you, which I... I've been so engulfed and leaning into everything you've said. I even I've had some tears because I was laughing so much. You have this brilliance about you. You are funny, which is awesome. And we didn't even tap into some of the things you've had in your past about being on the stage, even opening up for Robin Williams, because you kind of went into that arena just for a little bit because you are a funny human being. And I think that when we intermix um, humor into really practical tips and tricks for people, it just, it it makes it so much more powerful and it sticks. It's, it makes it sticky, you know, when when you remember. So I'm scratching scratching my nose because I see here when I logged in, I wrote um, Janine. So when you touch your face, it's called pacifiers. A pacifier is anytime you touch a piece of your body, it means there's a spike in stress in that moment. And so the reason I, I was like, try, I'm like, don't touch your nose. It's almost over. <laughs> don't touch your nose. It's almost over. Oh, right. And I'm like, don't touch it. I'm like, I have to touch it. So if you see my name, Janine, super strong driver, I didn't realize it was going to be up here like this, but I, because I'm trying to, because I am losing weight and because I'm working on being incredibly more healthy, I'm exercising and, and uh, for me doing what I call clean eating and watching my calories, a whole bunch of stuff, hired a trainer, all, all of it. But I changed my name because I get Amazon packages all the time downstairs. So I changed my name on Amazon to Janine Super Strong Driver. So every time a package comes, instead of my kids saying, Mom, a package is here. Now my kids say, Hey, Super Strong, a package is here. And so every time there's a, a, a delivery, I'm getting people in my house calling me Super Strong now. And so I'm using that as a technique to remind me of I who I am. You know, I yeah. am. You got I, this. Yeah, I like to say this. I believe in manifesting and I say this. I am what I say I am. W-H-A-T. I am what I say I am. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am abundance. I am treasured. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am abundance. I am treasured. And so I'll say that, especially if anything goes wrong throughout the day, I believe, I know, I see, I speak into existence that I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am abundance. I am treasured. And I say it all day long. The power of words 
Yeah. I'll end with this, and unless you have another question. If you think of trees, I love trees. A tree has the roots of the tree. That's the power of intention. It's what we believe about ourselves. Then comes body language, the trunk of the tree. Then the branches are thought. So body language happens up to five seconds before thought. So I know how you feel by reading your body language before your brain knows how you feel. And then the leaves mm. at the top of the tree or a fruit or a nut or a berry, when it falls to the ground, it builds what? New roots, a new tree. So words are so critical because it's changing what we believe about ourselves that then impacts our body language, impacts the way we're thinking, and then influences more words on how we talk and communicate with others. So I partner up with words in our movements all the time. They're super important because it connects our body language in the middle and our thought is being influenced by our words and our beliefs plethora of information. Thank you so much. We're getting super strong. If you see it there, if you're wondering why. Yeah. I'm not super strong yet, but I, I am there. I'm getting there. You Well, we all are. And I'm there now. I'm there now. You've been so awesome to share all of your wisdom and your insight. You, you just are just full of information. I just really appreciate you being on the Wellness Driven Life Show. I want to make sure everyone knows where to find you and where to find out more about you. First of all, go and check out her TEDx talk because you're going to love it. It's just as insightful as it is here. And her website is www.janinedriver.com. Go check it out. Get her books. Follow her. She's you brilliant. You can get them from the library too. You can get them from the library so you don't have to pay any money. And listen, I don't do a lot of live events. And, and we were chatting about this earlier. I'm, I'm flattered to be asked to do a live event. This is yeah. for entrepreneurs, real estate people, anyone who's always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and this live event is coming up October 27th, 2023. So October 27th, 2023, it's in Nashville. Especially if you're over in Nashville, it's a no-brainer for you to come. It's called impacteffect23.com, impacteffect23.com. And, and I'm one of a couple, I'm one of the keynote speakers. And my, my counterpart who fe reads faces, by the way, is going to read every single person's face that's there. And if you're dating anyone or thinking of hiring someone, make sure you've got a couple of pictures on your phone for them. Brian will do a face <laughs> reading. Uh, I'm doing body language makeovers and then doing my keynote. But the essence of this, this Impact Effect 23 is all about one conversation that could change your life. Meeting one person, one conversation that could impact your life. And I've had so many of these one conversations that can impact my life and have impacted my life. Um, I never thought that I could write a book. I have massive ADD. Uh, I'm a high evaluator. So as I write a chapter or read a chapter, I'm evaluating it and rewriting it to do those. I've done four TED Talks, but to do all four of those, I read, those are like, you know, one of 40 editions, right? Because I'm always editing and I never thought that I could write a book, but I had a conversation with a woman one time for five minutes. And she told me how she wrote her book and she did a little bit at a time. She did folders, folders one through 10 chapters. And when she'd have her ADD moment, she'd put a, a quote in chapter two and a quote in chapter six or tell mm -hmm. a story. I want to tell this story. That story I could put in chapter four. Oh, this story I could put in chapter two. And then what happened over a couple of months, all of a sudden I wrote this book and it's called You Say More Than You Think became a New York Times bestseller. It's translated in over 17 languages. I don't know how many now, but 17 as of a couple of years ago. And why do I share this story? Not in a braggy way. I share this in a way to tell you that, A, you can do anything. Watch your language. If you want to be play with me, you can do it for free online here on YouTube. I've got a lot of content here on YouTube. You can go to my website. I've signed, I don't sell virtual training like that. I do a, well, I do a course, but I don't do a course where you like sit there and I'm recorded. It's just not, I, I'm live all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Or come see me in Nashville on uh, October, October 27, 2023. Uh, I'm one of several events. It's an all day event. It's really cool. And then they bring me back a couple months later for another live event, because so often you get this training, like an all day thing, and then you kind of forget it. But every single keynote speaker and motivational speaker and educator is coming back to do another live session. So just alone exclusively. So please check it out. Impact Effect 23. I think it's like 500 bucks or 550 which is nothing. It really, it, it should be, I charge a lot more than that for a keynote. Uh, these are the ways that you can play with me. There's a ton of stuff here on YouTube. I'm the best version of me when I'm serving others. So reach out, let me know how I can help and how I can serve you in any way. Do not ask me any political questions. A, I'm a political idiot. B, I just want someone to do a good job for our country and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that.
Thank you. Thank you for having me on the Wellness Driven Life Show. I'm so happy. And thank you. If you have not already followed the Wellness Driven Life Show, be sure to follow right here on YouTube to get more amazing guests. And I feel like that was me bragging about myself. That's okay. My self-esteem is good. Amazing guests with amazing content and uh, have some more blue streaks in your life. Some of my biggest blue streaks came from really not wonderful experiences, bad bosses, trauma that happened, changed the direction of my life. Maybe you're one podcast away from changing the direction of yours. My name's Janine. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Bye everybody.